Uh, I'm Deb Boyd, and I'm very pleased to be able to welcome uh, those of you who have been with our region for some time now, and as well as those who have um, just joined the new chapter leaders and volunteers of the expanded HGSA region. Um, and that is the Upper Great Lakes region. Today marks the 14th annual Celebration of Hope, which honors our HD centers of excellence throughout the Upper Great Lakes region. And we are proud to be able to present this to you on Zoom tonight. Before we get started, I would like to express my sincere uh, appreciation to the chapters who helped us make this event come together and, and be a success. We couldn't have done this without the chapters, without the following chapters. I'd like to thank um, HDSA chapter Indiana, Illinois, and Iowa, the Kentucky, Michigan, Minnesota, and Missouri chapters, the Northern Plains, Central Ohio, Ohio Valley, and Northeast Ohio chapters, South Dakota and the Wisconsin chapter, and the Omaha affiliate. And a special thank you to all of the COH volunteers who work diligently to orchestrate these celebrations across the region in their respective states. You know, this year it's been a little bit different. We couldn't be, we couldn't host our individual celebrations of hope. So tonight we all gather as one region to have a little fun. You all have been invited because of your passion for our mission to improve the lives of everyone affected by Huntington's disease and their families. Your passions help us all to unite and the energy we create is what allows us to achieve our regional and our chapter goals to support families. HDSA needs you as much as you need our organization. And that is why we are so grateful to have you join us tonight. So now let's, let's get this party started. I would like to introduce our MC for the evening. And oh, I'm looking for, you know, I really apologize. I, I do not have this prestigious person's bio. I'm sorry, I think I lost it. Um, but um, I'm gonna let this celebrity, this HD celebrity introduce themselves. Okay. So Mr. MC, Ms. MC, could you join us please? Well, oh, Holland, good evening to all of you. This is so exciting. Wow. Look at all these wonderful people here. We are going to have a blast. Are you ready to have some fun? Say ho, ho. Ho, ho. ho, ho. Oh, you guys don't anticipate oh. having a lot of fun. We better try it again. You ready to have some fun? Ho, ho. Ho, ho. ho, ho. That's much better. Other people should make a lot of noise. Okay, well, in case you haven't figured it out, you know who I am. I am Santa Claus, and I am delighted to be your MC here tonight. We are going to have a blast. Even though this is a very busy time of year for me, I had to make time to be with you all tonight, and I thank each and every one of you for being here as well. Great, let's get started. On behalf of the Huntington's Disease Society of America, I would like to welcome all of you to the 2020 region-wide celebration of hope. Hope, hope, hope. Yeah, here we go. I'm so excited that everyone's here and that I get to, to see you all. And I just thank you. Let's just start off by right now, thank you. As you know, I'm from the North Pole. I'm married. I make a lot of toys for a lot of children because I love children and I love families because as we know, Family is everything, right? Who's got one of these? Okay, I know where you can get them. Just let me know. All right, so the, I want to talk about that the North Pole is awesome, okay? I love the coolness. I love the snow and the cocoa. Sorry, Sometimes there's a little something in the cocoa. No, shh. No, just cocoa, straight up cocoa. That's it. But one thing we don't have is we do not have a center of excellence up at the North Pole. But you guys do. In fact, there are over 50 centers of excellence across the whole United States that serve HD families each and every day. Oh, I didn't get a trim, sorry. I meant to. Okay, these centers of excellence, because of the passion and expertise of so many people who work there and do the supporting work, 
are amazing. And I just need to start tonight by giving them a big shout out and recognizing the medical directors. And uh, many of the people who are on this call are some of the medical directors and the other people who work at the Center of Excellence. But I just really want to start by giving them a personal thank you and recognize those directors and their staff. And you're going to notice they're on my very nice list. That's extra special, just in case you didn't know. All right, now, Grandma. Uh, Santa's yeah. having a little trouble fogging up. Imagine that. So, doing my best here. All right. Let's start with our very nice list. <clears throat> and a big, big thank you from, from all of us to them. Danny Bega at Northwestern University, Feinberg School of Medicine. Deborah A. Hall at Rush University Medical Center. Christopher James at Indiana University. Amy Hellman at University of Nebraska Medical Center. Nepala Patal at Henry Ford Health Center. Sandra Kostick at Ohio State University Medical Center. Martha Nance at Hennepin County Medical Center. Louise Zaza at Rodriguez at OSF Healthcare. Victoria Holliday, University of Louisville. Richard Dubinsky, University of Kansas Medical Center. Peggy Nepalis at University of Iowa. Also, John Kamholtz at University of Iowa, Kathleen M. Shannon, University of Wisconsin, Madison, Joel Polmutter at, Uni at Washington University School of Medicine, Adam Margolis at Cleveland Clinic, and Tanya Harlow at, Stan at Sanford Medical Center in Fargo. Thank you for joining us tonight and for all you do each and every day for our HD families. Can we, can we give my hand? So funny because I can't hear anybody. But I'm trusting you can all hear me, and that's what's important, right? Ha. Okay. I also want to give a big shout out and a ho 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 to my favorite elves who staff the upper Great Lakes region. Wave as I say your name, ladies. We got Deb Boyd, Peggy Cribbin, and Camille Coletti. They are very special ladies who provide so much encouragement and support to our grassroots volunteers in their fundraising <laughs> efforts. They will surely be receiving very special gifts from me this year, you betcha. All right, speaking of special gifts, I have found several really special gifts for my neighbors, friends, and families at the online auction that is happening right now. And as you know, it's gonna to close tonight. So you wanna make sure you check out the online auction tonight. And here's our, thank you, Camille. Here's the website to go to. Like I said, it closes at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tonight. There are over 50 great holiday gifts to choose from, from jewelry, artwork, beautiful quilts, and vacation homes. Also, the opportunity to meet with some of our amazing HD heroes. Check it out. Ho, 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 bid high, high, high. Thank you so much. Let's keep going, right? All right. I have this thing with gifts. You may have noticed in the past, I've been to your house many times and I've always brought you something wonderful. Well, I brought my big bag here tonight too. In fact, this is only one of like a hundred bags, but I have some <clears throat> special gifts to give away. Maybe I'm gonna need a little help from my number one elf. Can you help me out to give some gifts away? Oh, sure. Before we do that, San, I think I wanted to find out what everybody uh, on this call kind of wanted for Christmas. So um, there's a chat option at the bottom of the screen, and we'd like to just uh, call on a few people or just ask you to uh, go ahead and add to the chat what you would like from Santa for Christmas. Uh, Kelsey, I know you're on, Marcy, and many others. So if you want to use the chat box, I'll, uh, I'll let you know, Santa, what a couple of these people are looking for this year. All right. We'll see what kind of messages come over. Uh, we have something, uh, oh, they're starting to come over now. So let's see if uh, you'll have this in your bag this year. Um, we have uh, somebody named Stacy would like a, a vaccine this year, uh, which we hope that'll happen. Uh, a cure, gotcha. of course, I'm seeing Santa. Um, we're seeing a healthy family. That's what they want this year. Uh, Abby hopes for a vaccine for COVID. Um, Angela says, safe traveling to visit her family. That's what she wants for Christmas. Uh, a healthy family's coming over. A cure for... Betcha. These are pretty big orders, Santa. It looks like you're going to be busy. Uh, we'll just I'll step it up. I'll step it up. 
I know these people are really hoping for these gifts this year. So speaking of gifts, you know, we um, thought we'd just ask a quick trivia question and we'd like for you to use the chat box again too. Um, and the winner is the special uh, prize uh, from us. So I'm gonna give you a little trivia question. So get ready to answer in the chat. And the first four people that answer, we're gonna be sending them a special gift. So here is the question. Here's our trivia question for the night. HDSA, has a national fundraising campaign every year at this time that runs from October to December. It's very, very popular, especially this year, and it also comes just in time for the holidays. Trivia question. You have any idea what I'm talking about? Put it in the chat box. Oh, and I'm seeing Daphne saying it's Amaryllis. That's correct. Wendy Vaughn saying Amaryllis. And it's like Rosalie is saying Amaryllis. And Jessica. So we have four quick winners there. Uh, Santa, I think we need to give everybody there a round of applause. Don't you think? I agree. Oh, 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 well done, done, done. Very good. Very good. Thank you. Very good. Now, I have to tell you, this next part I've been so excited about. Uh, I want to introduce our very special guest speaker this evening. And I have to tell you that I, I am truly humbled by this man. And I, nothing much humbles me. So I got to tell you, that's a big deal, right? <laughs> All right. I would like to introduce Dr. George Yuling. He will be giving us the, the latest update on the HD research tonight. <clears throat> and I, I really want you to listen closely to his bio because it is each one of these pieces that his, his background does, because of each piece of this background, it brings him to be the perfect spokesperson, the perfect person for HDSA, and to be able to present us very with knowledgeable background and continuing um, ongoing wisdom. So uh, let me just listen up, okay? Because this is, I was so blessed by all this. All right, Dr. George currently serves as the Chief Scientific Officer and Chief Mission Officer for HDSA. We all knew that. Here comes the new stuff. Well, maybe you know everything. I don't know, but I didn't. Prior to joining HDSA in 2020, he spent four years as scientific director at CHDI Foundation in Princeton, New Jersey. There he worked to identify new drug targets for HD. He spent five years as a scientist on the Central Nervous Central System drug discovery team at Johnson & Johnson, working on novel therapies for Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. Dr. George received his PhD in pharmacology from Wake Forest University and did his postdoctoral training in the Department of Neurology at Massachusetts General Hospital, Harvard Medical School under the guidance of Dr. Yang Ho Chu. There, his research focused on understanding transcriptional dysregulation in Huntington's disease. <clears throat> Dr. George, it is with great pleasure and pride that I introduce you and give, turn this over to you. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Santa. Hopefully you can hear me okay. And it's really my pleasure to be here. Let me see if I can share my slides with you. With me. All right, can we see slides? Yep. Yes. <clears throat> Excellent. Yes. So, Thank you, everyone, and thank you for coming out and, and participating in this, and, and, and Santa did a great job thanking the Center of Excellence Directors and all of the, um, the volunteers and families. I mean, I, I can't thank you enough uh, for, for what, what the, the staff at the Centers of Excellence do for our families on a day in and day out to help them get by with this horrible disease, and, and also the work they're doing behind the scenes to, to hopefully find effective for Huntington's disease, and that's why I'm here to try to report on some of the progress that's been made. Um, but thank you so much for, for all that you do. Um, if, if it were not for the funds that you raise at things like events like this, um, we wouldn't have such great news to, to report. Um, so I want to um, take a little bit of time. So you're looking at this slide and you're probably saying, best year ever. What's this guy smoking, right? Um, what's wrong with him and, and, and how did he even get this job? And, and where do we begin with that question? And uh, I have no idea how I got this job, but um, <laughs> we'll hopefully 
after I give you some other facts of, of kind of reflecting on, on, on the year, hopefully at the end we'll, we'll kind of interact and see what everyone thinks. Or was it the worst year? I don't know. Politically, socially, everybody would, I think we'd probably be in agreement here that uh, if we were going to give a Yelp review of this year, um, it would be pretty bad, right? I mean, I'd probably give it a zero star if I could, but uh, I don't think we would recommend 2020 for anybody. However, um, like I said, let's take a look back at the year that was. So, you know, because of events like this, um, and the celebrations of hope, which go to support our centers of excellence, um, we've had a tremendous year and, and, and really four or five years in growing our center of excellence program. We've just to reflect back on where we were when we launched this pro relaunched this program in, at the end of 2014, we had 20 centers of excellence um, in 17 states. We're now at, we have 56 different HD clinics around the country in 33 states plus the District of Columbia. That's a greater than 250% increase in our center of excellence program. Um, and you know, it, you can see what we awarded over $1.5 million to these 50 plus centers last year. Um, to put that in perspective, when we relaunched the program, we were, we were at around $750,000. So not only have we more than doubled the size of our centers, we've more than doubled the size of the budget that we can allocate to these amazing centers. And these are places, as you know, I mean, we have the amazing clinic directors here that provide expert multidisciplinary care for their families. But most really what I what kind of gets me jazzed and why, we, why we're here too is, is to talk about research and what's going down on the pipeline is 92% of these clinics um, are providing clinical trials, access to families. So um, we're at a time, a golden era of, of, of HD research where there's more opportunities to get involved in research uh, more trials, and you'll hear about some of them today, but there's also more places to get involved. It's, it, we're trying to decrease that burden um, by having more and more centers involved in research. Um, we're, you know, you know, we're trying to avoid those unnecessary flights across the country to participate in trials just because there's not one in your state or in your region. So 2020 started really well. In January, we announced that we had 50 plus, 56 different centers, and I can tell you that next gen, this next month, next January, we'll be meeting again, and you know we'll be reviewing the centers of excellence, and I suspect that number will even go up again. So we're 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 committed to growing this program at HGSA despite the pandemic. So, as a scientist, I'm I'm naturally just a, I'm a eternal optimist. You know, I always think, oh yeah, 2020 did suck, right? Like, don't get me wrong, it was a terrible year. Um, but I look back, it's been 20 years since I, I joined the HD research community. And I look back in my, my office and I take a look at some of the things that we were working on 20 years ago. And it, it makes, it's like comical. If you think scientifically 2020 was bad, look at what we were working on 20 years ago and trying to, to in the clinic, it hopes that we would cure Huntington's disease or make it an impact. We were, we were testing things like Congo Red and minocycline and creatine and CoQ10 and Dimibon, these drugs that, you know, are, it, it's a stretch to say that they're well-rooted in the biology of Huntington's disease. We were running these studies because we could, and we, it, we learned how to run HD trials, but this, this was not really, this, these were low-hanging fruits as the, bit, as the picture shows, and, and really not well-rooted in the biology of Huntington's disease. And, and because of that, this is what, these are the headlines. You've seen them, you've read them on HDBuzz, you've read them on hdsa.org. And, and we don't have to go through all of these, but trial upon trial upon trial of these low hanging fruits failed. And that brought disappointment, um, but luckily, you know, we're not insane. And I always like to quote, uh, I'm, I'm calling, I'm dialing in from Princeton, New Jersey and in, in the Princeton area, this guy Einstein is a legend here in town. Um, there's statues of them all over and uh, like to quote him because, you know, insanity, I tell my kids this all the time, you know, you're insane if you're doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. 20 years ago, the HD research community, we were just a few years removed from identifying the gene that caused the disease. And we were working on um, 
you know, unfortunately that drug, the, the gene, when we discovered it, it, we didn't know what it did. It wasn't a, a, a protein that had a, a particular function that we knew we could drug and develop a drug, a small molecule. Um, we had, didn't really know, um, it was really hard to work with. So we were, we were working with just, we didn't even have animal models. So we were working with mice and lower organisms like worms and flies and working with very small fragments of the Huntington protein. Um, we were chasing down targets that we didn't know if they were causative to the disease or just merely a consequence of the disease. And we didn't have the science available to our, to our, at our disposal to target the gene that causes the disease. We were really limited to what scientists are, you know, when, in, when I was in pharma, we would call druggable targets. These are things that we could attack with a small molecule like an aspirin or a Tylenol or something. So lots changed, right? We, we have a new approach to target identification and, and trying to tackle this disease and we've become more human centric, not only in our drug discovery, but even at HTSA, we have the Human Biology Project where we are laser focused on trying to identify What's going on? What, what is the root cause of Huntington's disease and the only model that gets Huntington's disease? That's people, right? Um, we're able to now work with the full length protein. We're really, as you're gonna see, pharma and industry is very focused on the gene that causes the disease. And the way, and one of the reasons we're able to do that is we've had such genomic and technology improvements. We have the tools now at our disposal that we didn't have 20 years ago, like antisense oligonucleotides. Um, in gene therapies that are now empowering us to actually target the gene that causes the disease. So um, this year we've seen quite a, quite a bit of progress. Um, we've seen recently in neurocrine biosciences started a Connect HD trial on valbenazine, which is a uh, small molecule similar to Osteto and tetrabenazine you may have heard of. That's trying to, uh, it's a small molecule that we hope will improve the chorea, the movement associated with Huntington's disease. And that's, that's a large phase three study that's recruiting now. Um, we also saw, heard results just recently from a phase two study from Azavan. This was part of the STAIR study. Um, Azavan was testing a small molecule, a pill, um, that was, uh, it targets this receptor in the brain. And there's a lot of biology to believe that by, by blocking the activity of this receptor in the brain, you could decrease the aggression and the irritability in uh, patients, in individuals, but we know that that's a, a really common symptom in, in people with Huntington's disease. So um, the study is completed and the results are out and the, the, the results look very promising. But this may be, while it's not going to be a cure, this could be a, a very strong tool in our arsenal to improve the quality of life for a patient as well as the caregiver and keep individuals at home longer. Um, so, so that as reported. Um, just recently, another study from Prilinia, which is a very new company, um, is, is starting another phase three study, a large study called Proof HD. This is a drug that you've probably heard of before. It's been, uh, was part of the PRIDE study uh, when Teva had it. And now they're redoing this study to see if this drug, Predopidine, can improve total functional capacity. Um, uh, in, in individuals with Huntington's disease. So this is also recruiting. So both Neurocrine and Prolinia started large phase three studies during the pandemic. And also a phase one study from Sage Therapeutics, a small company in Boston that has a small molecule that um, has finished a safety study and is progressing to the next stage in clinical development. It's, it's successfully passed phase one where they have a small molecule that might actually improve uh, cognition in Huntington's disease patients. So these are just a few drugs that are moving through the pipeline and presenting or uh, yielding some interesting results that are maybe symptomatic treatments. We also saw, you know, it's at HDSA, it's really hard to, sometimes it's hard to show progress. You know, like, what are we, we're working hard, we, we're moving, are we, but are we really moving the needle? Are we making things happen? Um, and another really exciting thing happened this year, um, an Exxon Biosciences started a, a clinical trial um, and this was really exciting because this work um, a few years back through our human biology project, remember I mentioned we're kind of laser focused on human biology uh, and understanding that in, in, in the true model of Huntington's disease. Um, we funded some preclinical work uh, to test this Anexon antibody, uh, ANX005, uh, and to see if this bio, this, even this pathway, 
this complement pathway. I don't want to go into it, but it's really this, this idea here is that if we block this complement pathway is overactivated in the brains of HD patients. And if we could dampen it with an antibody and kind of lower the activity of this um, particular protein, we could pre pre uh, preserve synapses. And that's that kind of cool little picture up on the top right that we know die in Huntington's disease. Um, so HDSA, through help from, from you all funding the, you know, doing your amazing fundraisers, we're able to fund really innovative research. And this research has led to a clinical trial and this drug is now being infused in, uh, in sites across the United States. This year saw, uh, this year and, and a little bit of last year, we saw companies, literally companies were created based on the most, uh, the 2015 a genome-wide association study paper that came out. And this is this massive paper that highlighted that, um, suggested that there are these DNA repair proteins that are at play that are these other genes in addition to the Huntington gene that are maybe altering the course or the onset of Huntington's disease. And that it's these, this, it's not necessarily the CAG that you inherit from your mom or dad, but it's the rate at which that CAG that's expanded gets even bigger. And you can see this a little bit in this figure on the right, where this is a person that inherited the CAG of 51 um, from, from their parents. And hopefully you can see these little dots above the arrow that says 51. These are all, these are CAGs. These are Huntington cells with Huntingtons that have CAGs in, in the range of over, you can see some here, 700 or more CAGs. So this idea here is that Huntington's getting bigger and bigger in your brain across time. And now companies are latching onto this and developing uh, drugs to try to target this. Not to lower Huntington, but to stop its expansion. And uh, a company called Triplet Therapeutics, which was formed because of these observations, launched and successfully recruited the SHIELD HD observational study during a pandemic. It's, complete, it's, it's completely recruited. Um, and this is a study, it's not, a, it's not testing a drug yet, but it's a, a study to try to um, understand um, how this process is working in patients over time. So stay tuned for more of this. So now I wanna move to the stuff that's really, I think, got, I think me and I probably everyone here uh, very excited. And this is the idea of, you know, we know what causes the disease, right? It's the hunt, expanded Huntington gene. And you can see that here um, when someone in, inherits a CAG repeat of 40 or more, they live long enough, they will unfortunately develop the symptoms and signs of Huntington's disease. Um, so we want to target that. And there are a number of clinical trials now um, ongoing that are uh, looking at different modalities, different approaches to de uh, deliver these drugs, both intrathecally, which is like a spinal tap or a lumbar puncture that's into the spine, um, there's now viral gene therapy, which involves a injection directly into the brain with a virus expressing a drug that will lower Huntington. And now, you know, we're talking about, I mean, I can't even, these words are coming out of my mouth. Two trials have begun, and we'll talk about it, that are small molecules, pills that you can take that will lower Huntington protein in the brains of HD patients. Let that sink in for a minute. That's like, it's like goosebump worthy, right? It's cool. So let's talk about the ASOs and the Huntington lowering lumbar puncture approach, right? This intrathecal approach. Roche and Genentech, as well as Wave Life Sciences have two studies that are ongoing, both fully recruited, um, that target have drugs called ASOs. These are not your typical drugs that you take orally or you know, via IV. They won't get into the brain if you do that. So they have to be delivered via lumbar puncture into the spine and they travel up the spinal cord and they literally bathe the brain in the spinal fluid, bathe the brain in the drug. And this drug, you can see it here, um, which is really a piece of single, single piece, a single stranded DNA um, will bind, it's bind directly to the recipe, the RNA. This is the, the body's recipe that makes the bad protein. And your body is this amazing self-defense mechanisms that says, you know what, RNA, you go, let's go back to like basic biology from, from eighth grade and DNA is double-stranded, double-stranded, remember the double-stranded helix. 
and RNA is single stranded. And when your body sees this, it says, whoa, dude, like RNA can't be double stranded. Got to go, man. So it recruits all of these little proteins, it chops it up, the RNA is gone. And if you don't have the recipe in your, in your cookbook, you can't make the meal, right? So the meal, it's a crappy meal, but it's a meal, is the Huntington protein. That's the protein that we think is doing all the bad things. And so we have less of the recipe, we're gonna have less of the protein. And we believe um, that we can, if we can do this, we may be able to stop or slow disease progression. So uh, big news this year was that the largest phase three clinical trial in the history of Huntington's disease, the um, Generation HD1 study, testing a drug now called Tominersen, which is the ASO that um, uh, targets Huntington, is fully recruited. It's completed uh, its recruitment, and now we are waiting the results, which we will expect sometime in 2022. So the last patients are in. You can see what uh, the nearly 800 participants um, are doing. There's one third of them are getting a placebo, one third are getting the ASO every two months, and one third are getting an alternating uh, the placebo and the drug. So that in fact, they would be getting active drug every four months. Um, and what they're looking for in this, in this study is does the drug slow the change in total functional capacity? And you can see that here, you know, these are some, something I'm sure you guys are all very familiar with, the, the, the ability to work or manage your finances or handle you know, your activities of daily living, your ADLs. Um, that's what we're looking for in this study. In this study, um, in all states, it, re it recruited and in record time during a pandemic. Wave Life Sciences also announced that they have finished recruitment for both their Precision HD1 and Precision HD2 studies. These, this approach is very similar to the Roche study, except for one, one important uh, and, and may, potentially very important way, and that is that the wave antisense oligonucleotide, or ASO, is mutant Huntington specific. It targets specifically the mutant expanded Huntington and leaves the normal one alone. Because remember, you get you got a bad copy of the gene or the protein that you inherited from mom or dad who has HD, and you got a good copy from your other parent who doesn't have HD. And the Roche approach cannot differentiate between the two. It's going to lower both Huntingtons equally. But the wave uh, ASO, when you can see here, these are actually data from human cells. Um, their, their ASO almost completely obliterates, at least it's in cells, and we don't know if this will, this will necessarily happen in people in, uh, in vivo, um, but it completely gets rid of the mutant Huntington uh, protein, whereas it leaves the wild type, the normal Huntington intact. So this study is done. Another study, Precision HD3, targeting a, 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 another type of uh, SNP. I don't, for time, I won't go in exactly how these, these drugs work and how they're able to target these SNPs, but it's really interesting. Um, but another study is coming, uh, and we expect results of these, this study uh, in the first quarter of next year. So uh, fingers crossed for that. If that's not enough, um, HD in, uh, I guess it was in June, I will say it was delayed a little bit to COVID, but HD um, jumped into the era of gene therapy in 2020. So there are people walking around in the United States with viruses injected directly into their brains that are ex permanently expressing a drug that is directed to lower the um, both total Huntington, both the good and the bad Huntington. And that was a study that has been started by Unicure and it is uh, recruiting in the United States. And uh, we're, we're watching this with, you know, very anxiously and we're, we can't wait to see how these, this plays out, but they're not alone. Voyager, Takeda, Ask Bio, and Spark Therapeutics are just, are just a handful of others that are all developing in uh, gene therapies for Huntington's disease and are rapidly approaching the clinic, some of which will be in the clinic in 2021. So I alluded to this, you know, this, this kind of goosebump worthy, at least it is for me, the holy grail in my mind of an HD therapy is not, is not one that you have to go into the, you know, a hospital uh, or go to get an injection, an infusion, or to have, go under anesthesia and get a, an injection into your brain. It's, it's something I can go to Walgreens and get a prescription and get it filled and take orally. So it wouldn't require needles or surgery. 
I could easily adjust the dose if I wanted to maybe lower my Huntington a little bit more, or a little bit less. It would be a drug that gets into the brain because we think that's where we want to target. Um, but also it would lower Huntington all over the body because this Huntington protein is in every cell in our body. And yes, we're focused on the brain, but it's wreaking havoc on all tissues throughout the body. Um, and that's what I think we would want. And now I'm really excited to say we have evidence, we, Novartis, PTC Therapeutics, uh, with two different molecules, have, mice, have worked in mice and now in humans uh, that suggests that this is possible. We have data from children that have this disease called SMA um, that were treated with a drug, for example, an example of the Novartis drug, that um, when they were given this drug, their Huntington levels in their brain were decreased with an orally delivered drug. So they've both entered into phase one, these safety studies, and with the hope that in 2021, um, these drugs could uh, quickly move into HD patients and we'll start testing orally delivered drugs to lower hunting. This is, you can't read this and that's the whole point of this. this is, these are some of the companies not all the companies working in HD. These are just some of the companies working on taking a shot at Huntington, the target, what I think is the target that uh, we need to go after for, for Huntington's disease. There are a number of other companies that are working, and we talked a little bit about them, of, of addressing symptomatic treatment, which is also important, obviously. But look at this pipeline, and it's changing on a daily basis. Um, we have um, a number of these in the clinic, and a number of them um, approaching the clinic, uh, and we'll certainly be uh, changing this as we transition into 2021. So that, that is a, a short review. We, let's go back. We, we originally said, you know, this year, I think if we all put in our comments what we would grade 2020, I think we'd all say zero, one, negative 10, something like that. Um, but let's review the facts. What did we learn? So this year, scientifically, you know, don't grade, don't think about the whole year, but like the HD year in review for 2020 from a, a drug discovery perspective. We now have not one, but two small molecules to lower Huntington in the clinic. 2020 saw the first ever gene therapy for HD begin. An 800 person phase three study was fully recruited despite the pandemic. The initial results from WAVE's Precision HD2 study showed that the expanded bad, bad protein can be selectively targeted and lowered. Um, the SHIELD study from Triplet launched and recruited during a pandemic. Azavan and SAGE reported positive clinical data on their uh, HD assets. Two new phase three studies, Connect HD and Proof HD, all began in 2020. And Exxon began a, a, a trial to target neuronal function in HD. There are now dozens of novel Huntington lowering drugs in the pipeline. And I think this is really awesome. And this wasn't always the case a few years ago. All of these trials that I've mentioned have sites in the United States. This is not, hey, these are all being done in Europe, right? And part of that, I believe, is a reflection of the strength of our Center of Excellence program and our amazing clinic directors. So they get another huge shout out because the pharma is recognizing they're very, very uh, experienced in running these studies. So like maybe we can, this is my last slide. So I thought it'd be an experiment. I have a score in my head, but I'd love to see what everyone else's score in. If they want to put in the chat, like out of five stars, is it a zero star? Is it a one star, four star, three star, two and a half? What's everybody think? What are we seeing? Any, any, uh, any ideas and want to put in the chat? Let's see. A six. Holy cow. Hundred. I want, to, I want whatever Don is drinking there. Hundred. Yeah, four, four, four. Almost five. Yeah. Listen, I think we're close. I'm gonna to go to mine. Um, this is this is really exciting. I mean. I'm at four. I'm reserving five for FDA approval of a disease modifying drug. Delayed onset or progression of disease. We're not there yet, but we're closer than we ever have been before. So looking back 
Yeah, and if you, you were to jump in at one single point in our time at H, in the, even in the HD community, 2020 is a crappy year. But in totality, I, as I look back and I reflect over 20 years in the community, this, this has been a hell of a year. And I'm really excited about what 2021 has to offer us. So that is my last slide. I'll leave it at that. And uh, thank you all for your attention. And thank you again for all that you do. You're amazing. And uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of your night. Well, thank you so much, Dr. George, and those encouraging words, and then, and and spoken to us so that we can understand them, and we can take them, and we can share them with our, our loved ones. I want to let everybody know we have time to take two or three questions. If you from the group, if you want to go ahead and type in your question, and my wonderful elf Peggy will assist us with those questions. Thank you. Here we go. Make them easy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be shy. And listen, if you have questions after the fact, you know that I'm 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 always here. You can you can um, email me, call me anytime. Um, I'm here to answer any questions you may have. Yeah, that's great. Uh, just waiting to see if we get a couple questions pop up. One. What do you think is most promising? most promising? That's a good question. Um, well, I mean, obviously, I'm I'm really excited about any and all of the approaches to target Huntington. Um, I mean, if I, I, if you had, if I had, if they were all worked and you, I had to have my choice, I would love to have a drug that targeted mutant Huntington over total Huntington. But um, so I'm really excited that to see two oral drugs going into therapy, uh, into clinical trials. And scientifically, what's most exciting to me is this, and I didn't have time to go into it, but this idea of CAG expansions. Here, uh, here called somatic expansion, a big fancy word to just say that CAGs are growing in your brain over time. And this, this hypothesis is fascinating to me and the idea that we could, we could target that. The idea is we may not even have to lower Huntington at all. If we can, the fact that you're born with 41 CAGs, if we can freeze it 41 and not have that expand over time, you, you may be just fine, right? Um, that's fascinating to me, but that's years off um, from, from being uh, an approved drug. Uh, Dr. George, I see a, another question uh, from Jessica. How would the small molecule, uh, where'd it go in it? I just, oh, how would the small molecule help with juvenile HD? Um, yeah, so I think that the small molecule on any of these approaches could be applicable and help all HD, right? Um, the hope is, you know, we're, and, and we hear this a lot, like, don't forget about us. Don't forget about the later stage. Don't forget about the kids. And believe me, no one is. No one is forgetting about them. Um, right now, the, the trials are just um, starting at a, at a particular phase, you know, these stage of HD patients. We're kind of like, you know, the sweet spot where we can run these trials quickly to get an answer whether they're doing what we think they should do. And if they do work, you know, let's pick on the Roche drug because it's the most advanced. If that does work, and I'm hopeful that it will and alter the course of the disease, what we will do is start bookending this, right? We want to go and start treating patients younger as well as, as later. And um, those, those studies are coming. Dr. George, we have another question from Michael. How is COVID affecting HDSA's efforts and research progress? I mean... It's a great question, and, and it's you know I'd be lying if I said that some things haven't um, been impacted. I mean, the Unicure study that was delayed a couple months because it wasn't safe, and 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 um, some you know this involved a, a neuro neurosurgical injection into the brain during the height. They wanted to do this in April during the height of the first wave of the pandemic, so that was delayed a little bit. Um, some of some research. Enroll visits, you may have had some of your enroll visits canceled or delayed. Um, and some of our research labs have certainly been impacted, but I can tell you for the most part, and we, we fund researchers around the world and in constant communication with them, um, they're back in the lab. They're taking great precautions, but research behind the scenes on, on everything that we're funding, you may have even seen a press release on, on the human biology project that we funded a couple weeks ago. They're all working hard in the lab. And, 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 Despite the pandemic. 
And let's take a, one more, uh, Dr. George. Did you, uh, this comes from Noreen. Did you say that a small molecule drug will be available in 2021 or just beginning trials? Just beginning trials. So um, right now it's in phase one. Phase one is a very short safety study, usually done in healthy volunteers to make sure the drug is safe and does no harm. Those usually um, wrap up very quickly. And then the hope is then that drug will move into a phase two study, which is in HD patients. It'll be a larger and longer study. And the hope is that those studies will begin in 2021. It will not be available. I, I, I mean, I couldn't even begin to put a guess into when it would be actually <clears throat> FDA approved and made available. Like the, like the Pfizer vaccine is, is hopefully gonna get approved tomorrow or something, or you know, in the next couple of days. That will be then available maybe over the weekend, you know, quickly. It's, it's not going to work like that. And I think I see one more, Dr. George, from Jessica. Yeah. It says, my son is curious how these drugs are helping people so far. How the drugs are They're helping people so That's far. That's a great question. I don't know the answer to that. Um, you know, the drugs in the clinic. Um, and so all of these drugs, the researchers don't know. These are all, you know, blinded. So... And I think you know some of the center directors here are participating in these studies. Um, they they don't know what the patients are getting. They don't know if they're getting placebo or or the active drug. So um, that we won't know those answers until the study is done and the data are unblinded and open up and we know who got what. Okay. And I think you said, Dr. George. Oh, go ahead. If uh, anybody has any questions after this program, they certainly can reach out to you at any time, correct? Anytime. And I will, I will give you my slides, Peggy and Camille and Deb, and I'll send them over to you. You're welcome to have them and share them. And for family members that may have missed this, um, I'm happy to share anything I have. And so call me anytime. That'd be great. Uh, Santa, I think I'm going to toss it back to you. Thanks, Dr. George. All right. Thank you, Dr. George, so much. Again, what, what hope and inspiration you give us in a otherwise dreary year this has been. So what a great note to end on. But wait, there's more. Okay, so we have two special, more, two more special treats for you tonight. We have two shining young stars from Spotlight on a Cure that will delight you with their musical talents. First up is Miss Shelby Lentz with a voice like an angel. Shelby, what will you be singing for us tonight? Oh, good, I made you smile. Yeah, but it's just <laughs> as you wait. And I should just, yeah. Thank you guys so much for having me. And I don't know about you guys, but that presentation gave me a lot of hope. Uh, really needed that this year. So thank you for that. Um, and I'm going to be singing Silent Nights. Well, thank you, Shelby, all you. Thank you. Silence night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin mother and child, holy Souls and mine sleep in heavenly peace. Sleep in heavenly peace. Silence. Night, holy night, Son of God, love's pure light, radiance beams from thy holy face with the dawn of redeemed. Giving grace, Jesus, Lord, at thy birth, Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. 
silence night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round young virgin mother and child. Holy infant, so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace. Sleep in heavenly peace. Oh, Shelly, that was beautiful. Absolutely wonderful. You, and, Thank you. And everyone's going to agree with me. Yes, that's the voice of an angel. And, and in addition to that beautiful voice, your smile just permeated, I believe, everybody's heart. <laughs> I, am oh, I right? Can I get a yeah? Yeah. I'm sure everybody's thank saying yeah. All. We just can't hear them. <laughs> I can oh, say in the comments. You. Thank you, guys. You're really going to enjoy the next act, too, I promise. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, Shelby, for contributing your gifts and talents to this evening, and, and we so appreciate it. Thank next you guys up, so much. Next up, I'd like to introduce Carson Peasley. Carson, what, what will you be singing for us tonight? Hey, Santa. Um, tonight, I'll be singing a song called Make Someone Happy. Oh, very good. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Make someone happy, make just one someone happy, make just one heart the heart you sing to, one smile that cheers you, one face that lights when it nears you, someone you're everything to. Fame, if you win it, comes and goes in a minute. Where's the real stuff in life to cling to? Love is the answer. Someone to love is the answer. Once you found them, build your world around them. Make someone happy. Make just one someone happy. And you will be happy too. Where's the real stuff in life to cling to? Love is the answer. Someone to love is the answer. Once you found them, build your world around them. Make someone happy. Make just one someone happy, and you will be happy too. You'll be happy too. You'll be happy too. You'll be happy too. Happy too. Oh, thank you, Carson. That was awesome. You have certainly succeeded in making us all very happy indeed. Oh, Great. oh, oh! <laughs> I even got the sales on that one. Yeah! Thank you, Carson. Thank all you, right. Santa. Well, this, this old jolly fella is getting a little tired. So I better turn this over to Camille. Camille, you're one of my favorite elves. That's all there is to it. And you're all decked out tonight. And I know the whole family's there. So thank you all for being there. and. And Camille, it's all you now. Go, girl. 
<laughs> well, that was amazing, guys. Thank you so much, Car Carson, Shelby, and George. That was so great. Um, I just wanted to give a final thank you to everybody for, for jumping on tonight. I know it was so unfortunate that we couldn't meet in person this year across the entire region, but I think it was really special that we were all able to come on at one night all at once. I mean, we had about 80 people at one point, so that was just so special for me to see. Um, I just wanted to give a final reminder that the silent auction ends in exactly 31 minutes. So 7.30 Central, 8.30 Eastern time. So get your final bids in. And uh, finally, I did see some uh, donations come in actually throughout the last hour. So thank you guys so much. And if you're willing and able, um, we really appreciate it. I mean, it's, it's quite amazing what we can do with you guys. So thank you so much. Um, and finally, I will let Santa conclude the night. Well, you know what I'm gonna say? Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night! Ho, ho, ho! Well done, people! Good night, everybody. Thank you so much. Good night, good night. Good night. Merry Christmas. Good night, Dave. Good night, Good night, Rosalie. Yeah. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night, Claudia. Good night, everybody. Good night, Merry Christmas. Good night, Santa. Good night. Shelby and Carson, you are amazing. Thank you. Great night. Truly. Good songs, both of you. Beautiful. Okay, we're going to leave. Good night, everybody. Nice. All right. Great job, everybody. Thanks to all. This, this is a real party because I'm the last to leave. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Well done. I'm, I'm not not, I wouldn't expect anything less from you. <laughs> yes, exactly. Nice. That's a home run. That's a fantastic <laughs> giant home run. Well done. Carson was fabulous. Oh my God. I got goosebumps when he was singing. Oh, it was all I could do was to stay in my chair. I wanted to get up and dance. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not oh, leaving. You're not leaving? There we go. All right. <laughs> staying. We're staying until they close us, close the place down. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. All of you. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Oh, goodness gracious. Ladies, that was fantastic. That was a wonderful oh, hi. <laughs> How are you? So well done. We're good. That was awesome. Well, well I think George spread a lot of hope for us, which yes. I think kind of we left it on an upbeat note. So that was pretty cool. Very good. Yeah, but, but to bring so many different communities together in one night, you know, to come together as one. I mean, what a, what a great idea. And, and to see it come from... A little bitty idea a few months ago to tonight. Awesome. Just awesome. Congratulations. That's really what it was. It was a mix of so many different ideas all brought in as one. I, I'm so impressed yeah. by what it transformed to. Yeah. yeah. You know, Camille, you had 75 uh, Zoom people, but there were two, sometimes three people. So we yeah. had probably well over 120, 130 wow. people. Oh. That's awesome. Sure. Yeah. It, uh, that was great to see so many people jump on. Hopefully, uh, Karsten made everybody smile. He uh, saw a lot of smiles as I was going through the ribbon there. there. Um, no, that's, that's over here. Okay. And that's, uh, that's well, a nice way to end the show. Well, we, we've got some secret weapons here in Michigan with Shelby, too. Oh, beautiful. Shelby was just. Uh, that's somebody else? Yeah. Well, then, bid up. Come on, buddy. <laughs> Get up. Get up. <laughs> hey, that's what it's all that's about, right? My rib eye. Bid up, bid up. <laughs> we went to the last um, year and it was awesome. We had it for Christmas Eve last year. It was so good. So we hope for winning it again. That's what I was thinking. I was like, it's the perfect thing to make for Christmas Eve. <laughs> yep. Really? Yep. It was so good. <laughs> Say, um, oh, I'm, I, I'm I am kidding. so impressed with everything that you guys have done. I'm in tears, <laughs> which is great. And I dressed up because why not? 
because I missed the celebration of hope. And thank you, you guys for all your hard work. You thank look you. beautiful. <laughs> you look beautiful. Okay. Wait, wait, look. I got the oh whole my. Oh my wow. God. That's the way to go. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, thank you guys so much. And you know, just, thank you. Oh. Very nice job. Well, thank you for what you do. We have a lot of people. It's a, it's a, it's a one big family, as we say, and we're, we're doing this together. And that's what makes it so great. Yep. Mm -hmm. Family. Yeah. All right. Merry Christmas, all. Thank yes. you. Happy holidays. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Say goodnight. Bye. 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 Bye.